Good morning. Praise God. God bless you this morning. God keep you this morning. Thank you for tuning on me once again. I just thank you, Jesus, for another day. Praise God. Here I am blessed today. But hallelujah. I want to talk to you about uh, tongue and prophesy. Talk about tongue and prophesy. I'm going to read out of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, starting with verse 1. It says, Let love be your highest goal, but you, but you should also desire the special ability to spirit gives, special, especially the ability to prophesy. For if you have the ability to speak in tongues, you will be talking only to God. Now no one now no one else, only to God. You know, somebody some people talking in tongues, you know, we don't know what they're saying, only God knows. So it's supposed to be only for God, not for uh, us, not for the other people's, you know, but only to God for God's saying. So sometimes I'll be like I'll be like wondering why do they speak in a tongue? You know, in front of the crowd, in front of everybody, the sanctuary, whatever, you know, it's not even supposed to be for us. It's supposed to be only for God. It says, since people want to be people, it says, since people won't be able to understand you, that's what the book said, they won't be able to understand you. It said, you will be speaking by the power of the Spirit, but it will all be misery, but one who prophesies strengthens, strengthens others in courage. You know, strengthen and encourage them. It says, and confront, conform, confort them. A person who speaks in tongue is strengthened personally, but one who speaks a word of prophesy is strengthening the entire church. You know, prophecy. You know, you know, it, uh, it says prophecy. You know, strengthen the whole church is what it says. Strengthen the entire church, the whole church. It says, I wish you could all speak in tongues, but even more, I wish you could all prophesy, for prophecy is greater than speaking in tongues, unless someone interprets what you are saying so that the whole church will be strengthened. It's also uh, the book of Numbers chapter 11, verse 29. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, if I should come to you speaking in all unknown language, how would that help you? By you not understand what I'm saying, how would that help you? You know, it's like some people speak different language in different countries. You know, some speak uh, speak French and some speak uh, Italian. Some speak uh, German and Mexicans and all the you know different. Some speak African. You know, I mean, how can you understand it? You know, by them talking to you, you don't understand what they're saying. The same with tongue. You don't understand what you're saying. I mean, you don't only be a guy understands all of it. We don't understand. But if I bring you a revelation or some special knowledge or prophesy or teaching that you will be helpful, even lifeless instruction, I mean instruct, instruction, like the flute or the harp must play the notes clearly or no one will recognize the melody. And if the burglary doesn't sound a clear call, how will the soldiers know they are being called to battle. It's the same for you. If you speak to per if you speak to people in words that don't understand, how will they know what you are saying? You might as well be talking into an empty space. There are many different languages in the world. But I just said there's many different languages in the world. And every language has meaning. But if I don't understand the language, I will be a foreigner to someone who speaks, you know, you know, who speaks it. And the one who speaks it will be a foreigner to me. And the same is and the same is true for you, since you are since you are so eager to have the special ability to spirit give, seek those that will strengthen the whole church. So anyone who speaks in tongues should pray also for the ability to interpret what has been said. For if I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying, but I don't understand what I am saying. Well, then what I shall do, I will pray in the spirit and I will also pray in the word. I understand. I will sing in the spirit and I will also sing in the word. I understand. Four, 
if you praise God only in spirit, how can those who don't understand you praise God along with you? How can they join you in giving thanks when they don't understand what you are saying? You will be giving thanks very well, but it won't strengthen the people who hear you. First Corinthians, I mean, that's First Chronicles, chapter sixteen, verse, verse thirty-six. So if you're only speaking up there, speaking in tongues, you know, so your ability is between you and God, while everybody else listening, they looking at you like, well, we don't know what you're talking about. You know, you getting all this, you know, energy, you know, and strengthening, you know, and good news and feeling good for your own self. Like, what about the people who don't understand? You know, speak something that they can feel it too. Praise God, you know, say something that they can understand. Hallelujah. He says, I thank God that I speak in tongue more than any of you. But in church meeting, I would rather speak five understandable words to help others than 10,000 words in an unknown language. Dear brothers and sisters, don't be selfish in your understanding of these things. Be innocent as babies when it comes to evil. But, it says, but be, me 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 it says, be measured, I mean, it says, be mature. And understand the matters of this kind. It is written in the scriptures. I will speak to my own people through uh, uh, strange language and through the lips of foreigners. But even even then they will even then they will not listen to me, say the Lord. And that's uh, Isaiah chapter twenty-eight, eleven through twelve. Isaiah chapter twenty-eight, verse eleven through twelve. It says you. It says, so you see that speaking in tongues is a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy, however, it is for the benefits of believers, not unbelievers. So it's like for the people who believe, not for the unbelievers. The unbelievers don't think we're crazy. I don't know what we're talking about. It says, even so, if unbelievers or people who don't understand these things come into your church meeting and hear Everyone speaking in an unknown language, they will think you're crazy. Just like I said, that's what the book said. That's what they think you're crazy. But if, but if all of you are prophesying and unbelievers or peoples who don't understand these things coming to your meeting, they will be convicted of sin and judged by what you say as they listen. Their secret thoughts will be exposed and they will fall to their knees and worship God, declaring God is truly here among you. That's also the book of Isaiah chapter 45 verse 14. It says a call, you know, talking about a call of orderly worship. You know, well, it says, well, my brothers and sisters, let's summarize when you meet together, one will sing another, well, you know, one will sing another, Another will, you know, teach. Another will tell some special revelation God has given. One will speak in tongues, and another will interpret what is said. But everything that is done must strengthen all of you. No more than two or three should speak in tongues. They must speak one at a time, and someone and someone must interpret imper, interpret what they say. But if no one is present, who can inter interpret? You know, they must be silent in your church meeting and speak in tongues to God privately. Privately to God. That's what it said. Also in Romans chapter 14, verse 19. Let two or three people prophesy and let the other evaluate what is said. But if someone is prophesying and another person receives a revelation from the Lord, the one who is speaking must stop. They must stop the one speaking. In this way, all who prophesy will have a turn to speak one after another, so that everyone will learn and be encouraged. Remember that people who prophesy are in control of their spirit and can take turns. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as all the meeting of God, holy peoples. First Corinthians, that's also in First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse twelve. I mean verse ten. First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse ten. 
It says woman should be silent during the church. This is they're talking about well, you know, woman should be silent, you know, let the man teach the world, let the man preach. Do say woman should be silent, you know, at, at during the church meeting. It is not proper for them to speak. They should be submissive just as the law says. If they have any questions, they should ask their husband. Well, if you have a husband, I'm not married, but, you know, we should ask their husband. What well, the husband don't know nothing. What well, the husband don't have all the answers. Well, you know, he may be cutting them wrong, you know, but it do say ask your husband at home. Not at church, not the building. It says go home. When you ask when y'all go home, ask him at home. Not funny everybody trying to embarrass them. You know, ask them at home. That's what it says. For it is improper for a woman to speak in church meetings. First Timothy chapter two, verse eleven through twelve. That's where it's also you can read that in also in that book. Uh, verse thirty six says, Or do you think God's word originated with the Corinthians? Are you the only one to whom it was given? If you claim to be prophet or think you are spiritual, you should recognize you should recognize that what I am saying is a command from the Lord himself. But if you do not recognize this, you yourself will be not, you know, would be, you know, not be recognized. So my brother and sister, dear, I mean, so my brother and sister, be evil to prophesy and don't forbid speaking in tongues. But be sure that everything is done properly and in order. Praise God. That's also First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse thirty-one. Praise God. Hallelujah. I remember a while back when I was a kid, I used to ask my daddy. I'm like, what are they talking about? I did people talk speaking in tongues and everything, and I said, uh, he said, I don't even know. So why? Even? He said, he. I guess he didn't know the meaning of it too. He said, why even? You know, he said, he said, he, why you say why you go talk speaking tongues? You don't know what you're saying. Why are you speaking in tongues? You don't know what you're saying. You know, why are you speaking in tongues? And people don't understand what you're saying. But, you know, you're speaking in tongues of God. God, you're talking to God. You know, God knows what you're saying. But the rest of it, we only know what you're saying. You know, it'd be like sounds like a whole bunch of noise. And me, that's why I thought God said, just do it one at a time. And I know everybody's speaking in tongues. And, and just back like a, sound like a whole bunch of mumbling, 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 mumbling. It's going to sound like a whole bunch of mumbling. Mumbling, 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 mumbling. You know what it sounds like when everybody do it. You know, it's like, you know, I mean, it's for other believers. They probably run out the church don't understand what y'all talking about. They don't know what y'all talking about. You know, they wouldn't understand what you're talking about. I'm a believer. I don't even know what you're talking about. So speaking in tongues is for you talking to God was supposed to be for talking to God only. Because he knows what you're talking about. But anyway, I'm going to read out here about true happiness. It says, God blesses those who realize their need for him for the kingdom of heaven is given to them. God blesses those who mourn for they will be comfort. God blesses those who are gentle and lonely for the different, I mean he says the gentle and lowly for the whole earth will belong to him, to them. God blesses those who are hungry and thirsty for justice for they will receive it in full. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those who hurt or poor, who I mean, who hearts are poor, 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 who hearts are poor, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted because they live for God. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when you are mocked and persecuted and lied about because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad. For a great reward await you in heaven. And remember the zestant prophets were prosecuted too. Matthew chapter 5 verse 3 through 12 talks about that. It says each beauty to tells how to be blessed by God. Blessed means more than happiness. It implies the fullness of invisible state or those who are in in God's kingdom. The brutitude don't promise neither pleasure of earthly property. Being blessed by God means experience hope and joy independent of our work. 
circumstance to find hope and joy, the deepest form of happiness, following Jesus no matter what the cost. God blesses you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is given to you. God blesses you who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. God blesses you who weep now, for the time will come when you will laugh with joy. God blesses you who are hated and excluded and mocked and cursed because you are identified with me, the Son of Man. When the happiness rejoice, yes, leap for joy, for a great reward await you in heaven. And remember, the ancestors prophets were also treated that way by your ancestors. That's also the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 20 to 23. It said, these beauty uh, tools describe what it means to be Christ followers. They contrast kingdom values with, wor with, wor with worldless worldly values showing what Christ follow can expect from the world and what God will give them. They contrast fake pity and true humility and finally they show how Old Testament expectations are fulfilled in God's kingdom. You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who haven't seen me and believe anyway. Praise God. You ain't seeing God, but you believe in many ways. That makes you blessed. Praise God. What does it say? You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who haven't seen me and believe anyway. Praise God. That's also in John chapter 20, verse 29. Says, Some people think they would believe in Jesus if they could see. And they uh, defied at signs, a definite signs or miracles. But Jesus says we are blessed. If we can't believe without sin, we have all the proof we need in the word of the Bible and the testimony of believers and physical appearance would not make Jesus any more real to us than he is now. Praise God. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you for tuning on and watching. Let me read the word to you all. Praise God. That's what I say. I'm sharing with you. Read for yourself. Take heed. All the time, take heed and do your dues. Anyone pray for each and every last one of you. I don't know what you're facing this week. I don't know what's going on in your life this week. Well, only God knows. I don't know. I mean, I'm just, you know, here just to encourage you, lift you up, read the word to you, and pray for you all, no matter who you are, no matter what you look like, no matter what language you speak. You know, it's for everybody. The world is for everybody. Heavenly Father, pray for those who are watching. God bless you. God keep you. I pray the Lord be with you and strengthen you in every area of your life. I pray the that you get some wisdom and knowledge and understanding no matter who you are, no matter what you look like. I pray the Lord is be with you. I pray you trust and believe God. When you make that move, he'll do the rest. And I pray you, and you be real sure for your life. You know, talk to him, pray to him. You know, ask whatever you desire, whatever you need in your life, he will do. And I just pray the mighty name of Jesus that you learn to be patient in the Lord. You know, he has not forgot about you. He see everything. He know everything about what you was going through, what's going on in your life. I just pray you trust him and be obedient and acknowledge him in all that you do. Keep them first, no matter what. Don't stop, don't give up, because he's not going to give up on you. I pray you get the word, get tuned on for your life in Jesus' name. And I rebuke every sickness and, and disease right now. I pray, Lord, be with you, strengthen you, heal you right wherever you hurt. Back pain, lower back pain, leg, arm hurt, headaches, neck aches, or whatever aches. I pray, Lord, to heal right where you are in Jesus' name. You will heal by his stripes. You is heal. Glory be to God. God bless every girl, every boy, every man, every woman. You know, probably haven't you seen YouTube or seen me on YouTube, yeah, but I pray in the name of Jesus, God will bless you and keep you and keep keep continue to stay in the word and do the will of God. Get into it. Get into the get into God's business in Jesus' name. This is his business. Get in the word and do what he say do it. If you love him, you keep his commandment in Jesus' name. God bless you, God keep you. Pray, Lord protect you, wherever you're about to do, wherever you're about to go. I pray he just leads you and guide you safety. Maybe you be stuck you maybe you stuck somewhere in traffic. Maybe you in traffic. I don't know where you are. About to get on the plane, get off the plane, get in your car, go walk and get on the train, bus, whatever it is. I just pray, Lord, protect you and lead you and guide you. Wherever you have to go and back home safely. In Jesus' name. God bless you, God keep you in Jesus' name, I pray. You know that the devil steal your joy today or no day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. God bless you. I mean always a pleasure to be on YouTube to 
you know, for me to talk to you, read to you about the Word of God, you know, and I mean, I'm not ashamed about all this thing, God, that I'm, he put it in me to do, you know, a lot of things, you know, you know, I could have been doing, you know, on YouTube, really, a lot of things I could have been doing, you know, a lot of funny stuff, a lot of jokes, I mean, I mean, a lot of stuff I could have been doing on YouTube, but thank God, he put it in me to make, do something that makes sense, and this makes sense, there's some good news, and it makes sense, to him, and it makes sense to me too. And to share my testimony, sometimes I share my little, share my little testimony with me, what's going on with me. But praise God, He keeps me strong. He keeps me because God, you know, knows all about it. But praise God, and that's how I just hold on to my faith and hold on to Him. I don't stop. I don't give up. So whatever's going on, I have to keep continuing to do the do. I don't worry about the don't because I know it's gonna be all right. The trouble don't always last. No, 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 sorry, it don't always last. But anyway. God bless you. God keep you. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. You have a blessed week. Don't let the devil steal your joy today or no day. In Jesus' name, glory be to God. Amen. And see you later until next time.